This past week, I attended a seminar on sleeping. The advertisement had caught my eye because I've been worried that I haven't been sleeping as well as I used to. And it worries me because I know that sleep impacts so many things, our mood and our concentration, our immunity, and just our overall quality of life. The presenter covered all kinds of strategies that I could use to try to get back to sleep or fall asleep. He talked about getting the right amount of sunlight and exercise and drinking things like tart cherry juice, journaling, avoiding screens at night, or even using a sleep app on my phone. The strangest one was wearing this bracelet around my ankle that would vibrate and imitate something or other inside the earth. I don't know, that part really kind of went over my head. I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> but if you too are having sleep difficulties, know that we are not alone. According to sleephealth.org, one in three adults, which is about 84 million people, do not regularly get the amount of sleep that they need to be healthy. Now, certainly there are sleep diseases and disorders, and there's too, ca too much caffeine and all that, but today, I just want to talk about the problem of being kept awake at night by an anxious and worried mind. I know that sometimes I probably could get to sleep if I could just get my brain to be quiet. <laughs> Have you ever been unable to settle into sleep because your mind was just racing and you couldn't shut it off? Raise your hand if you've been there. <laughs> Whew, it's not just me. Okay, good. <laughs> well, maybe what happens is there's this uninvited thought that just digs its claws into your brain and try as you might, you just can't shake it off. Maybe you start to replay a conversation that you had earlier in that day and you're stewing about what you said or what the other person said. Maybe you even start replaying that scene and imagining that you said something different than you did. Or maybe you're rehearsing what you're going to say the next time you see that person. And it's just miserable when you just can't stop that conversation in your head, right? Or maybe for you, perhaps it's the insecurities that you hide during the day that bubble up at night. Those doubts and questions invade the bedroom, threatening to close in on you. Things like, can I handle my responsibilities? Am I doing a good job? Does anybody care about me or my loved one? Have I made too big of a mess this time to bounce back? How will I get out of this tight spot that I'm in? With stresses, like these in my mind, I have chosen to preach on Psalm 4 today. The Psalms are more like poetry than historical accounts, and they're meant to be sung. Psalms are actually people's prayers. They can be really comforting because they give us this whole range of human emotions, and it can be pretty raw, which is really relatable for every generation from King David all the way to ours. Psalm 4 is a psalm about trust. But the author goes through a bit of a mental wrestling match before they get there. It's like a late night rant before falling asleep. The person writing the psalm addresses God and then people who have apparently damaged their reputation. Then they're talking to themselves or maybe it's to a friend, it's kind of hard to tell. And then finally they're back to God again. Let's take a look at the psalm together. To the leader with stringed instruments, a psalm of David. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Selah. The word selah is used in the psalms like a rest in a musical piece. It's a place to take a breath and rest and consider what's being said before moving on. Honor is the respect and dignity that belongs to a person in relation to their friends or their family or their community. 
For this particular person, their honor or their reputation has been damaged by liars. For that, the psalmist is crying out and lamenting. I would too. Another translation reads, you gave me room when I was in a tight spot. If either of these pictures makes your heart race a little bit, then probably this metaphor for distress works for you too. I know I am one who does not like to be closed in. Anyone else? Yeah, <laughs> yeah especially after COVID, right? Um, but by calling God the God of my right, the person recognizes that God is the ultimate basis for honor for the faithful, not the judgments of other people. Our rightness as people is found only in the love and the grace of God. Let's go back to the psalm again. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Selah. Remember Selah? Ponder it. Now let's move on in the psalm. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. So here the psalmist seems to be concerned about God's reputation. The psalmist is considering those who doubt God's goodness if they don't see an increase in their wealth or good fortune or their uh, happy circumstances. That's what they think is proof of God's blessing. But this person who is praying, they have a different perspective. This child of God knows that the Lord is better than any great harvest, popularity, prestige, or accolades. This person has been given joy by the signs of God's acceptance. God's loving kindness is what makes them complete. And trusting this goodness is what brings peace. Peace beyond all understanding and makes it possible to now settle into a peaceful sleep. People of God, you too can feel completely safe to pour out your late night ramblings, your most difficult emotions, your doubts and questions and insecurities, because God listens and God cares. Honest reflection is often what comes before that repentance that both Peter and Jesus mentioned in our other scriptures for today. And honest reflection produces that thankful response for forgiveness and a changed heart that leads to refreshment. Psalm 4 frames bedtime as the possibility of a moment of trust. When we close the day with trust, we surrender what we wanted to happen that day, but it didn't. And we come clean about our mistakes. We celebrate what we have enjoyed and have hope for tomorrow. I'd like to end by sharing a bedtime prayer with you. And it's going to be a little harder for us today who are meeting in the morning than it was for the Saturday evening crowd. So you got to really pretend, really work at this now. Imagine that you are laying comfortably on your pillow, kind of like this baby, and take a deep breath. Now think back on your day. Let's think back on yesterday and bring to mind the places you were, the people you were with, things that were said, things that you heard. Saint Ignatius taught a spiritual practice called the examine. It's a great practice that you can do alone or with other people. We're going to do a simple version of it with just two questions. The first one is, take a moment to think, what was your favorite part of the day? Or the way St. Ignatius would say, where did you experience consolation? Everybody got that favorite part of yesterday? Now, the second thing is to think about the worst part of your day. Where did you experience desolation? Now, with these memories gathered around, it's time to say goodnight to them and let them go. Trust them to God. 
Know that tomorrow is a new day and a fresh start. To end, we're going to join together in a traditional Jewish bedtime prayer from Psalm 31. Close your eyes if you like, if that's easier for you. Repeat after me. Into your hands I place my life. All right, let's do it again, just a little bit quieter this time and together. Into your hands I place my life. Now this next time, notice if there's any th way that your hands want to move with these words. Ready? Into your hands I place my life. Okay, one last time. Let's whisper this time. Into your hands I place my life. Sleep tight now. Or if you're still awake, get comfortable and sing. Or maybe just meditate on the words to all praise to thee, my God, this night, our next song. Amen.